Well, we got a milestone in the currency markets today that we want to talk about. The euro hitting parity with the U.S. dollar for the first time in 20 years. Let's bring in Jens Nordvig, founder and CEO of Exante Data. Uh, and Jens, you think parity isn't the last stop here? It's going to go through. Well, we have a, a extremely unusual situation on our hands in Europe. Right, we have a war right next to the EU. We have uh, Russia that is essentially trying to create as much pain as it can for the European economy uh, deliberately. It's not a normal situation, right? And, and the euro is trading accordingly, not normal. Uh, it's 20 years ago since we were here last time. Uh, last time it was because some very special capital flows. This time around, there's a very fundamental reason why we're here. So there's not really any good reason to fade it uh, uh, unless we see something new on the energy front. Jens, it's Tim. How about the dollar-yen component of, of the dollar's move? Because BOJ has been missing in action, uh, claiming they see zero inflation there. And while the, docs, the dollar basket is certainly 60 percent euro, uh, the move in, in dollar-yen has been extreme. I, I'm just curious if you think that's going to give ground. Yeah, so, so if you look at this year, initially uh, the dollar was strong because the Fed was hawkish and a lot of uh, currencies that were very sensitive to Fed policy moved a lot, such as dollar yen. In the last couple of weeks, we've started to see something different. Dollar yen is starting to stabilize a little bit. And what you're seeing is that it's the growth sensitive currencies, especially some EM currencies that are taking a major, major hit. So we're in a transition phase. The dollar has been strong through both phases, but it's strong against different currencies. And we're, we're having something that smells a bit, a bit like an EM currency crisis now, uh, really for the first time in a long time. Yeah, that was going to be my question, Jens. Emerging markets, obviously, are going to get eviscerated on the back of something like this. EEM is going, I think, from 60 down to current levels over the course of about a year and a half. I mean, how does that play out? Because, quite frankly, it can't be bullish here back in the United States at a certain point. Yeah, so... So I think, I think what worries me about this cycle, right, is that normally when we have significant uh, pressure on asset prices, we have somebody is going to come in and help, right? We are used to the global central banks coming in and helping or China coming in and helping. China is trying, but not very successfully to get something going in China. And uh, then you look at all the global central banks, they're still in tightening mode. We're not going to have like a, a big, big pivot from central banks like soon. Right. Maybe we'll have something later this year. But for now, the central banks are kind of forced to stick to a, a hawkish tone because the inflation is so high. So that's what's worrying, that this could be a pretty drawn out situation with not really any clear catalyst for relief, I would say, in the next couple of months. Are we going to start talking, Jens, about, uh, I don't know what the way today you refer to, uh, you know, pigs? Um, you know, once upon a time, we talked about the pig countries uh, and their debt loads. And I'm wondering if that becomes an issue once again here. Yeah, so, uh, so we've already seen that the sovereign bond spreads in Europe have, have widened out pretty uh, meaningfully this year. And, and the ECB is preparing a certain tool uh, to, to fight that already, right? So this is already a concern. And as long as the ECB is in tightening mode, uh, which will be the case as long as the inflation is, it doesn't look like it's coming down very materially, that's going to be an issue. And that's, that's also something that was different. Like 20 years ago, when the euro was down at these levels, we didn't have sovereign bond spreads uh, blowing out. It was actually a pretty orderly decline all along. So from that perspective, this move here is, is quite a bit more concerning than the one we had 20 years ago. Wow. Jens, good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jens Nordvig, uh, Exante. Um, Tim, I'll go to you since you're the ambassador. <laughs> when it comes to the EM, when yes. it comes to, um, you know, parts of Europe, where are you most concerned about right now? Well, I'm, I'm very concerned about Europe, and, and only two other times in the history is uh, inflation adjusted has dollar ever been this strong against all of its core trading partners, 2002, so where Jens is referring to, and back to 1985. But, but those are moments when something uh, was breaking. And, and so we're at a place here where the dollar is going to force pain. And, and although a lot of EM currencies had made adjustments and they are floating freely and have not been afraid to already revalue multiple times in the last five years, I mean, look at the Mexican peso. 
peso. Look at in, look at levels on the Brazilian real. Look at you know forget the the Russian ruble. Look at the Turkish lira. I mean these are these are uh, conditions where we've seen this over the last four or five years. But um, there's no question to me Europe's pain is something we're just getting going. And we talk so much about the currency translation into this earnings season, but we forget about the EU as the second largest economic uh, zone in the world and 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 the impact on on multinationals and what it means. And again, I think we are going to hear this from pharma companies. I think we are going to hear this from companies who rely on Europe, not just because of the, the currency dynamics. So these are extreme levels on the dollar. Two other times in history, inflation adjusted. You should be concerned. And yes, as an EM guy, uh, I don't think this is a, a moment that you're ready to start buying. Steve? Uh, when you look at two stocks uh, that stick out for me, so you're, you're going to see money flows uh, into U.S. dollar. That means it's going to get worse. And if you look at Capri, Capri's cost basis is in euros, but they sell in USD. That and Trinseo, two names I own. I guess you should look over your portfolio and see what stocks you own have cost basis in euros and sell in U.S. dollar. And that's a right way trade that you want to be in. Makes sense to me, Melms. I mean, I think Steve looks great in all the Capri Holdings attire, number one. I thought one. you were going to say Capris. Oh. Those as well. But, you know, yeah. I think it's a bigger, it's, it's just much bigger than individual stocks. I mean, Steve is right in terms of those names, but this is a big deal. Now, I think what might happen is, you know, these numbers come out not as hot as people think. You get a relief rally, maybe on the back of bank earnings. If the market does rally, I think the dollar will sell off. And that will assuage some of these concerns. I think that will be short-lived. I think the dollar will be continue to go higher from here in the weeks to come. So what I think about is uh, companies, when they report and they have this FX hit, right? We saw Microsoft was sort of mm -hmm. one of the, the sort of flagship ones to do it. Sometimes the market doesn't seem to care. They right. just sort of back it out. And but sometimes now they, they do. do. <laughs> now they do. They really do. And so I think, you know, Steve's point about, look, what do you own? Where do they, where do they source? And where do they sell? So I think it's something like Target. They source somewhat overseas, and they sell here. So that's better. Walmart also sources a lot overseas, but they have more of a mixed um, where they sell. Mm -hmm. so, so repatriating those lesser dollars when they, when they sell overseas. So I don't know. I feel like in a good tape, market doesn't care, but now they will.